Hello everyone, you're watching Venominous Meet the Savage, and I've got another show for you here. I don't want to waste much time, because it's late, so I'm not going to play an intro or anything like that. Not that I have a really good one for you anyways. <laughs> so, uh, so I got this video I want to show you that um, Camille from Please Stop the Ride sent me. It's pretty wild, it's by the... Who are they called? UN Environment Program. They got this lovely bit of propaganda for children. A little short film that we're going to watch together right now. And then I'll take you through some things. Anyways, I don't want to waste much time, so let's get right into it. I'm going to share my screen. And away we go. School of Hard Knocks is what it says. Oh, I should give you a slight backstory to this. So, it's a dystopian future. Here, I'll just read their description. Duh. What would the world look like if we hadn't saved the ozone layer? It's 2084, and a disease known as the Grow has taken over. Three teenagers, Knox, Sagan, and Terran, find themselves on an epic adventure to save themselves and the world. Alright, you're caught up. Just watch this. It's crazy. Here goes my epic intro. This is me, Knox. Just another average girl living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that it says the shield on that screen. With that um big um half circle. It says the shield. Continue. Not much to look at, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. What did you think it would look like? This is what happens when you leave the world in the hands of people who don't care about the planet. You didn't think about the future. That's what the graffiti says. Some of this might look familiar to you, but things have changed. There's a good look at it. The future. Or, sorry, <laughs> the shield. Oh, I'm trying to read over here. Thanks. And something. Yeah, a picture of a flower. Look here. I think the word find over here. Yeah, that's all we can see. We don't live much older than 20 because of a disease that started spreading many years ago. But that's something before my time. We grew up on stories that it's linked to the smog in the air, but anyone who actually knows the answer is long dead, and we're stuck with the skin disease that we call the grow. We don't know much about So look at that pattern from the grow. <laughs> and they don't live till much older than 20. So all young kids live on the planet in the future here. The future without an ozone layer, that is. Anyways, look at that pattern. Pretty wild. It makes me think of a, almost like a, like it's digital, you know? 
about it, but what we do know is that the worse it gets, the less time we have. It's the reason all the old people are dead now. Just want to go back a little second here. There's that pattern. That the worse it gets, the less time we have. It's the reason all the old people are. Rest in peace. What does that say? Mm. Dead now. Something. Oh, I'd be interested to find that out. I can't quite read it on my screen. What if I make it big for myself? Actually, I can change the quality of this. Let's maximize that quality. Oh, that's better. Better. Brother friend? Yeah. Rest in peace, brother friend. 2058 to 2079. And then we got 2049 to 2067. April 22nd. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just continue. And now that I'm starting to feel the effects of the grow, I find myself spending most of my time here, looking for anything that might help. One human's trash, another human's treasure. Central junkyard. Look at the height of these trash heaps here. Help me. Most days start and end the same, but... Today will turn out a little different. Reset Earth. One ozone, one planet, one change. <laughs> Want everything, huh? Hello? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I... <coughs> I couldn't stop the machine. W what are you talking about? Smog. The grow. It's all true. Knox, please. <laughs> you must find Sagan. How do you know who I am? Hey, tell me. He, he needs to help you stop the grow. Who? <laughs> Sagan? 'm just looking at the poster up here we are stardust checking it out no don't see anything else save our pale blue dot. Can we reserve or reverse the grow? What is the cause? I can't quite read this over here. Mm, and then we have Grand Tour, and it looks like Saturn. There's your Saturn. So we've got the black cube, and we've got the Saturn already. And we have cats fighting. That's fine now. Alright, let's continue.
Quick! Whoa! Ah, Max. I'm gonna have to show you something. Great. I'm finally getting into something good here. Can it wait? Oh, no! Come on! Trust me, it's important. Hey, easy, easy. I'm coming. I don't get it. What? She was right here. Mm-hmm. Sagan, I'm serious. She knew who we were. Okay, Nox. So thanks for bringing me to a junkyard. It's been fun, but I'm gonna get going. This is weird. You see that, right? I know how crazy this sounds, but I know what I saw. There was a bright flash of light and an old woman dying of grow. But she spoke of stopping this disease. You must believe me. Wait, she... What did she say about the grow? She was pointing at this when I left. Whoa. This looks dope. Ah. Oh, no. Nox, I think I did something here. What's up with these numbers? I don't know. But she was mumbling about 2055 in a machine. She must have been talking about this. Let's see what it does. No, wait. It could be dangerous. Sagan, if there's a way to stop this, I'm going to find it. I don't have much time left. Exactly. You don't have much time left. Aren't you worried you'll also end up looking like this woman you keep talking about? Covered in grow and dying in this junkyard? I mean, am I supposed to believe this is some kind of time travel? <laughs> nah. This is a bit too science fiction. I mean, ah, uh, no. I get it. This is a joke, right? <laughs> You're messing with me. Huh? If this is a joke, then nothing should happen when I press this thing here. No, wait! The smog. Now, when I uh, first watched this, I had the. What? Let's ask you. Where did your mind go to when you hear about this smog stuff? Would you think? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this. A Bill Gates venture aims to spray dust into the atmosphere to block the sun. What could go wrong? From Forbes. Uh. January 11th, 2021. Microsoft's billionaire founder, Bill Gates, is financially backing the development of sun-dimming technology. The word that would uh, potentially reflect sunlight on, out of Earth's atmosphere, triggering a global cooling effect. The stratospheric controlled perturbation experiment, or... Scope X, launched by Harvard University scientists, aims to examine the solution by spraying non-toxic calcium carbonate <clears throat> dust into the atmosphere, a sun-reflecting aerosol that may offset the effects of global warming. Widespread research into the effic efficacy of solar engineering has been stalled for years due to controversy. Opponents believe such science comes with unpredictable risks, including extreme shifts in weather patterns not dissimilar to warning threat trends we are already witnessing. Environmentalists similarly fear that a dramatic shift in mitigation strategy will be treated as a green light to continue emitting greenhouse gases with little to no changes in current consumption and production patterns. Scope X will take a small step in its early research this June near the town of Kiruna, 
Sweden, where the Swedish Space Corporation has agreed to help launch a balloon carrying scientific equipment 12 miles 20 k kilometers high. The launch will not release any stratospheric aerosols, rather it will serve as a test to maneuver the balloon and examine communications and operational systems. If successful, this could be a step towards a second experimental stage that would release a small amount of caco <laughs> dust into the atmosphere. David Keith, a professor of applied physics and public policy at Harvard University, recognizes that the very many real concerns of geoengineering, it is true that no one knows what will happen until the caco is... Uh, released and the st then studied afterward. Keith and fellow Scopex scientists published a paper in 2017 suggesting that the dust may actually replenish the ozone layer. <laughs> By reacting with ozone destroying molecules, further research on this and similar methods could lead to reductions in risks and improved efficacy of solar engineering methods, write the authors of the paper. The exact amount of caco needed to cool the planet is unknown, and Scopex scientists similarly cannot confirm whether it is the best stratospheric aerosol for the job. Early research suggests that the substance has near ideal optical properties that would allow it to absorb far less radiation than sulfite, sulfate aerosols causing significantly less stratospheric heating. This is the purpose of the experiment. Once a safe experimental amount of caco is released, the balloon will fly through it, sampling air at atmospheric reactions and recording resulting dynamics. Frank Kirch, Kirch, I don't know, the project principal investigator, does not know what the results might bring. The perfect aerosol would not immediately tamper with stratospheric chemistry at all. The only thing it would do is scatter maximum sunlight and hence cool down the planet. Proponents of geoengineering have cited the global cooling effects of volcanic, eru volcanic eruptions. The results from the introduction of sulfuric ash into the atmosphere, the 18... 15 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia resulted in a year without a summer, while the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines lowered global average temperatures by 0.5 Celsius. Deliberate introduction of similar particles could potentially counter the decades of greenhouse gas emissions. A report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change suggested the Scopex procedure could lower global temperatures by a full 1.5 Celsius degrees Celsius for no more than 1 to 10 billion a year. Again, these temperatures decreases temperature decreases bring with them serious risks freezing temperatures in 1815 led to failed crops in near famine conditions. British scientists have cited stratospheric aerosols from volcanic eruptions in Alaska and Mexico has a potential to cause a drought in Africa's Sahel region. Or Sahel region. Major disruptions of the global climate could bring unintended consequences negatively, negatively impacting highly populated regions and engineering another Refugee crisis. What have I been talking about? This food crisis that's coming. It's going to have a big refugee crisis, and I guarantee that they're going to make this happen very soon. 2022. That was the year that Soylent Green was, uh, was um, set in. The year of the Ouroboros. David Keith has proposed the creation of a risk pool to compensate smaller nations for collateral damage. Um, 
caused by such tests, but such a payout might be little comfort to those displaced by un unlivable conditions. The United States, Brazil, and Saudi Arabia blocked a 2019 United Nations assessment of global ge geoengineering plans. International cooperation will be required to assess the risks, winners and losers of any ex such experiment, and how best to proceed with all in mind. Considering the unknown risks attached to solar engineering, the OECD members should continue in their efforts to develop economically attractive renewable energy t technology, even as it supplements such efforts with limited and careful research and experimentation, with assistance from Haley, Aaron, and James Grant. <sighs> It just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Of course, they've been doing geoengineering engineering forever. It's just now they're willing to admit it. I uh, very much proved this in an article I wrote, I don't know, 2019, when they first came out saying that they were going to do the experiments. I believe I remember, I remember the Scope X name. I remember that name. Because I remember that article, and it was talking about testing the geoengineering. And then I showed that there was stuff that very much shows that they've been doing it for years. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, they're, uh, they're causing problems. And probably why the World um, Wildlife Fund is uh, pushing for an indoor garden revolution as I've shown previously. Uh, oh, pfft. <laughs> WWF. Um, uh, to start indoor I think it's Garden Revolution. I think that would probably get me what I want. Yeah. Indoor farming revolution. I showed this in my <clears throat> food chain reaction. Oh wait, maybe it was in my coronavirus pandemic part 6. Either that or the food chain reaction series I started in my uh, hive blog anyways why the world wildlife fund is trying to spark an indoor farming revolution the conversation organization is known for work protecting endangered animals and is now but now it's starting to help push for broad solutions such as major plan to expand vertical farms in st louis in an attempt to prove that local farming can cut emissions anyway, i'm not going to read all this but the world, the World Wildlife Fund was a player involved in um, They even have it, the story, their own story, written about it. How a new game helped us understand the future of food. By 2030, the inevitable has happened. A coup in Pakistan, flooding in Bangladesh, the world's farmers were breaking under pressure of volatile commodities prices. Reliable food supplies couldn't be relied on anymore. The policymakers across continents initially rea uh, reacted to these developments with uh, ad hoc responses ranging from meat tax throughout the European Union to increase humanitarian aid, but the crisis continued unabated and the volatility in food prices became the new normal. And this was, this was issued in 2016, but 
that line was set in 2015 at the actual security game, the, the, the tabletop exercise, if you will. Finally, governments, businesses, and multilateral institutions came together to increase food stockpiles and enact, and enact a universal carbon tax to lessen the possibility of a future shock to the global food system. This scenario was part of a food chain reaction global security game hosted by WWF Cargill, the Center for American Progress, Mars Incorporated, and game designer CNA, formerly known as the Center for Naval Analysis. Held at the WWF headquarters in Washington, D.C. this past November, the two-day simulation revealed how governments, institutions, and private companies might respond during a future crisis in the world food supply. Food security affects everyone, but it is also an opaque cobweb of competing interests, and it can be difficult for, to pinpoint solutions. We tend not to think about the issue until a humanitarian crisis strikes and we are spurred to act, taking steps to prevent such a crisis and to grow f enough food sustainably in a worldwide challenge is a worldwide challenge. And where what did I want to show the timeline that this little thing was played out in it was a ten year period. Ten year period uh does it say the year? Not in this one, but it's from the timeline period. It's from 2020 to 2030. And they said in that time period, there'll be two major food crises. Not one, but two major food crises. And this was done in 2015. This um, role play game. It's pretty wild, huh? Anyways. Getting off topic, let's get back to the film. Oh, I think it refreshed. No? Okay, we're good. It's Knox! N Knox, what happened? Are you okay? I just... find a way to stop the growth? No. They were trying to save people from the sun. The smog was released everywhere. It must have been to save them from a skin disease. But I think it's what caused us to get this. Even if I stopped the machine, we just have a different looking disease. All that I found is that we can't be saved. Oh, well, okay. That's a bit depressing. This talks about our ozone layer being destroyed. What? What is that? Is that why they released the smog? I don't know for sure. But I think this machine can tell us why. I'm using it again. Nope, nope, no ways. Trust me, nothing good comes from messing with time travel. I mean, we've only got a few years left here and I'm not taking any chances. This is too risky. You don't think playing with time travel will have an effect on us? Sagan, don't tell me you're scared. <laughs> Come on, I feel fine. We have a chance here to stop this grow from ever happening. Don't tell me you don't want to be a part of that. Mm, uh, I don't know. Look, I'm using this again, and you can join me or stay behind. But the way I see it is, we've already used it now. What's one more time? Uh, fine, okay, look. One jump, then we're done. Okay, come on, let's go. Whoa, what, would you stop trying to press that button? If we do this, we're gonna need a bit of help. Ah, Taryn, seriously, man. It looks like it's been over 30 years since anyone dusted in here. <laughs> wow, Sagan, it, it looks like it's been over 30 years since... Uh... Hey, hey, what? Wait, what's that junk you're bringing in here? Junk? Junk? <laughs> this piece of junk is a time machine. What? A time machine? Sagan, if this is real, I, I, I 
mean, we have no idea what this could possibly mean. Imagine the implications. I just want to look, point out his shirt here. In this together. And we got what kind of looks like either fire or three leaves and a sh spaceship or satellite going around. Very interesting. Not sure what that means, but yeah, in this together, you know that. Seriously? This is the guy telling me he's in India? Knox, what can we do? Change the past. Hey, all these books got wrong. Hey, look. Sagan said you'd be able to help us. Is that true? Yeah. Back out. Yep. What do you need help with? We need to know when the ozone layer was destroyed. We just need a date and a location, then we're out of here. Ozone? Hmm. Not many people know about that anymore. But... Uh... Okay, well, to start off, it wasn't a single moment that destroyed our ozone. It's... something that's been happening for over a hundred years now. I told you he'd know. Well, then... can you tell us how to stop it? Stop it? <laughs> We're a few hundred years late for that. But if this is really a time machine, then that changes things. First, how much do you actually know about the ozone layer? Come, look here. This is Earth, and, and this here is the ozone layer. An amexferic shield made up of ozone molecules that sit in the stratosphere and absorb most of the UV radiation from the sun, protecting mankind, plants, and our ecosystems. But over time, our no wonder no one ever comes in here. Hey, look here. Come on, come on. Stay with me. Can't you just tell us where to go to save it? So, you... You heard nothing I just said. Okay. Ah, let me turn this on. Okay, to, to sum up, we have the Earth, and we have the ozone layer. Cool. So, basically, since the early 1900s, mankind has been releasing gases into the atmosphere. Gases like CFCs. And since then, CFCs have been used in everything. Fridges, air cons, aerosol cans, you name it. At first, we thought nothing bad would happen. But eventually, they caused the problem. We actually made a hole in the ozone layer? Well, it, it looks that way, yes, but... CFCs destroy ozone molecules, and that thins the ozone layer. Then, UV radiation shines through. Well, that's bad. I mean... This layer was all that stood in the way of everyone getting skin cancer and going blind. That explains the smog then. It was the new shield. The new shield. Launch date 2055. Looks like a giant drone to me. Project, Project Blue Shield it's called. Interesting. Objective alternative shield to UV rays. Side effects unknown, possible links to the grow, but unconfirmed. Yeah. Ah, okay. They were stopping the UV radiation. Yeah, well, that's why the world is the way it is. Without the smoke, we would have skin cancer and other diseases, but with it, we have the grow. So I guess with this fancy time machine, you can choose how we die. Skin cancer, all the growth. Ah, geez, Taryn. Way to kill the mood. Well, you can't say we didn't. So he's saying without this ozone layer, we have skin cancer and other diseases. But with it, the grow. I don't know, man. It seems like you're trying to link climate change with disease. Anyways, we'll, we'll get into that later. Try. We can't give up now. You promised me one jump. If we can stop these gases, we can stop the ozone layer from being destroyed. If we stop CFCs, then the ozone layer is safe. Right? I guess. I don't think it's that simple. Okay, much more powerful people tried before and failed. Yeah, but they didn't have this. When exactly were these gases created? 
I, I, I know it was around the 1920s. Just let me double check. Ah, oh, patents, okay, here we go. It says here the patent for CFCs was signed in 1928. Okay, so. Just kind of trying to look at the books. I see what I think it says Moby Dick. Can't quite read the other titles. That's the only one I see there. Mm. Oz. Funny how you have a tree stump here with the word grow, with grow underneath it. It's got a little plant on this tree stump. But the disease is called grow. Hmm. Can't quite read these. Webster's. It's a dictionary. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. You guys want to keep it down back there? I'm, I'm just trying to concentrate. Okay. Okay, so it's important to remember that with the patent CFC, you guys, seriously, uh, oh, oh. Oh, this is not good. Okay, Knox, listen. Ten minutes. That's how long you were gone for, and it's all the time we have. Don't let anyone see you. We do what we need to, then leave. Let's try not destroy our own existence. Uh, why did it have to be New Year's Eve? Shh. No, you, shh. This is impossible. There must be thousands of papers here. We just need something with CFCs on them. Anything. Come on. Hey. You guys, were you in 1920? What? Taryn, how did you get... D did you find it? I knew you wouldn't find it without me. I had more information for you, but you left in such a rush. What are you waiting for? Destroy it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Give me the paper. You know, this won't help, right? This is just a piece of paper. We can destroy it, but nothing will change. The idea is already in everyone's mind. In 1928, CFCs are the future. They were made to save people. Guys, we're running out of time. This is my last chance. I'm destroying it. Whoa. Ah, my grow. You knew this would happen, didn't you? We're in a mire, bro. Why is everyone telling me to shh? Look at your arm. I thought something like this would happen. This machine is dangerous. You lied to us, didn't you? You knew this would happen. How could you send us into this machine, knowing what it would do to us? Sagan, look at me. My time is nearly up. Wouldn't you have done the same thing? I can't believe it didn't work. I was so sure. I should have cured the grow, not made it worse. And now, now I'm really on my own. I guess Taryn was right. CFCs were going to be made no matter what we did. Wait a minute. I've seen this before. This was on that flyer. We actually changed something. I've got to tell Sagan. We have to take this thing apart and hide it away so no one else can find it. Sagan, are you serious? This is a time machine, and you want it to stay. Hey, guys! Stop! It worked! It worked! Oh, yeah! Cool! Wait, what worked? Uh, our trip to 1928. I dropped my bag in the patent office, and they must have found the flyer. I know what needs to be done now. Uh, Lady, yes. She has another plan. Uh, you don't understand. Look! See for yourself! It's changing. Wait. What? 
is this possible? That's what I was saying. This is what was written on the flyer. What does it matter anyway? Using this machine will kill us. You guys, come on. We have a real shot here. Don't tell me that we're not even going to try. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can try. But leaving that flyer has hardly changed anything. Yeah, and if we want to convince people to save the ozone layer, then, guys, we have some serious homework to do. Ah, uh, uh, oh, okay, fine. But look at our grow. We don't have many jumps left. We can't make any more mistakes. Are you sure this is everything? Yeah, it's everything that I have that links to this moment in some way. It all boils down to what happened here. World leaders came together to ban CFCs and save the ozone, but they failed. If we want this to work... Look up here. <laughs> Fake science. CFCs do not destroy o ozone. Fake science. Like they talked like that back then. Well, this is the headline that we need to change. This is impossible. We can't make this many jumps. No, no, this can work. I mean, look what they're doing in Antarctica. These guys were onto something, and not long after, people at NASA could have gotten involved. If we can get to these places at the right time and convince them that what they are doing is right, then the rest is just history. Okay. You think we're ready? Yeah, we're ready. But Knox, you're staying behind for this one. What? Sagan, come on! Uh, look, I know I lied before, but that's no reason to- No, 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 it, it's not that. Look at your grow. If you come with us and we fail, that's it for you. And I'm, I'm not gonna let that happen. Well, you better not fail then. Ahem. Are we doing this thing or what? Let's do this. And here we see another common uh, turn, uh, phrase we see, and that's trust the science. Just trust the science. Believe the numbers. Yeah, that typical programming. Carrying on. Point it in the right direction. What do we do? We're saving the world. He's saving the world. He's saving the world. Yes, this is working. It's actually gonna work. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. Why is this not changing? I have to do one more jump. We need more help. Oh, say again? Oh, I don't understand. It should have worked. Not just gone. It should have worked. We went to the right time and the headlines changed. Why do we still have Taryn, stop! Knox is gone. 1966. Say again? Look at this! She's used the time machine. Whoa! 
<laughs> Taryn, look at this. Uh, uh, Sagan, the time machine's just shut off. It's not coming back on. No, 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 Nox isn't back yet. This can't be happening. Sagan, Sagan, that's not going to do anything. Please! Machine, are you? Come on, fake man! What? Wait, what? Nox! You're back! I don't believe it! Oh, we did it! Oh. <laughs> Wait, Sagan. Are you crying? No, it's... it's just us. Okay. <laughs> what on earth did you do? Yeah, I... I had to try something. I thought making this change would be too small, but it worked. Yeah, it worked! We got our own land back. The people we visited just needed to know that what they were doing was right. They needed the support to keep going, and I guess this was only going to work if they all played their part. You know, no one... I just want to point out that 2025 is blank. Is ever going to know what we did here, right? I know, but that's not why we did it. So that's our story. We've hidden the time machine in a place no one will find it, and now all that's left is, well, to see how the rest of our lives play out. I never thought we'd be able to make a difference, but we did. One ozone, one planet, one chance. Wow. Well, in the end, I guess everyone did. And we need to remember that. I mean, sure, if you want to call us heroes, go for it. <laughs> but we're not the only ones. Yay! Happy ending. Reset Earth. Isn't it beautiful? Doesn't it make you feel warm inside? This is just creepy. Creepy, creepy propaganda for kids. Because this is what it's actually designed, uh, intended for. I have to get the website address because it shows it. Oh, yeah, actually. We'll watch that. Alright, so www dot ozone dot unep dot org. Where's that backslash reset earth? Wow. Look at that. It kind of looks like Mars. You got your shield there. It looks different than I was looking at it last time. I was looking for my phone though, so... 
The year is 2084. Nox, Sagan, and Terran don't have long to live unless follow three teenagers as they race against time and travel through sorry race against time and travel through it to find a solution to the grow a disease that has been spread across the world and cut life expectancy to less than 30 years their journey takes them back in time where they find the cause of the disease learn about the importance of the ozone layer and impact of working together towards a common human cause Follow them as they reset Earth. <laughs> wow. That's some mighty propaganda you got there. Through an immersive animated web series and mobile game, Reset Earth brings hope to Generation Z by showing them what was achieved after the world came together in 1985 at the Vienna Convention to address the ozone crisis. Montreal Protocol Status Ozone Timeline 20 questions and answers Facts and figures Ozone and SDGs Science Meetings just wild ozone treaties and SDGs the ozone layer protects people and life on earth the ozone secretariat works with all nations to provide the ozone layer oh how generous of them successfully protecting the ozone layer may help deliver many of the sustainable development goals there's your Ouroboros food consumption They'll have you eat in your own. It's no poverty. Zero hunger. Good food and well-being. Where's four? Wait, are we... Alright. I'm confused. It's one, two, three, then it jumps to seven? Oh, this is just the goals it helps or something. I'm confused. I guess that's what it is. Decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, the climate action, affordable and clean energy, industrial innovation and infrastructure, life below water, life on land, partnership, 17 partnerships for the goals. That's 17. Such a popular number this this year. What with your QAnon and your... And, um... It's popping up in everywhere in the media. Like, 17 million mink culled in Denmark. And... Oh, there was like a... A scientist or a doctor came out and was... Oh, I wish I had that clip. It's, uh... Ridiculous. 17 million Skittles. <laughs> I don't have the clip, but um, basically that was the analogy they used to lay out how the risks of getting the COVID. Um, yeah, anyways, I'll move on from that. And skills are rainbow colored, by the way, so there you go. Montreal Protocol is founded in on partnership. Developed in developing countries work together to protect the ozone layer. The Pro Protocol Multilateral Fund supports developing countries to meet their Montreal Protocol's obligations and is, is a focus for engagement with in industry and civil societies. The Ozone Secretariat works with governments and intergovernmental inter organizations, industry, and the scientific community worldwide. Uh, SDG 17 highlights the many ways in which working in partnership is essential to achieve sustainable development and take over the world. Anyways. 
I want to go back. Back again. Come on. Oh wait, Let's see if they're throwing up some gang signs or not. No. This is almost like the 666. Not quite. So, same thing I said before. I search for of answers. Our heroes will travel through time. Oh, I think I read that part before. Ruin science, this fictional story, and game will present a dr dramatized picture of what Earth could have been like if the world had not acted to protect the ozone layer and signed the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer in 1987. Aimed at adolescents and parents, this innovative animation and game from the United Nations Environment Program Ozone's Secretariat uses the power of storytelling to educate and inspire young people around the world, understanding that many young people are anxious about the future state of the planet. This campaign aims to show them the power of science, collaboration, and cooperation in solving a complex global challenge is. The campaign also offers a message of hope showing how the global community was able to come together and solve one of the most complex environmental challenges of all of all the uh, challenges all the time with remarkable success it happened once and it can happen again uh. all right so yes what i got out of this propaganda was that it was aimed at, obviously it's aimed at children but what it was trying to show you was how disease and climate are linked. They like to do that now. Because they're both perfect weapons for propaganda. Uh, for pushing their global, sustainable global goals. Um, because they're both basically invisible enemies. I mean, climate, you can actually see some stuff. Climate's a bit more realistic. But the, the invisible enemy that is the virus. Not so much. We can see this attempt to link the two in the media all the time. Here's climate and COVID-19 converging crisis. Crises. Crises. The climate crisis is still raging. One A year later, new headlines were dominated by the climate youth movement and a sense of urgency, but the COVID-19 has displaced that interest and awareness. In fact, the causes of both crisis, crises share commonalities, and their effects are converging. The climate emergency and COVID-19, a zoonotic disease, are both born of human activity that has led to environmental degradation. Neither the climate emergency nor the zoonotic pandemic were unexpected both have led to the unpreventable loss of lives through actions that are delayed insufficient uh, or mistaken. However, aligning responses presents an opportunity to improve public health, create a sustainable economic future, and better protect the planet's remaining natural resources and biodiversity. The health and climate change are interwoven is widely accepted. Well, then it must be true. With extensive evidence of their interactions, for the past five years, the Lancet Countdown on Health and Climate Change has monitored and reported... Hold on a second. Okay. Anyways. So, yeah. Basically goes on to uh, basically say they are one and the same, blah, blah, blah. Then we have, well, see, they say it's a zoonotic disease, 
but they haven't ever found the zoonotic cause of disease, so they somehow link it to climate when they don't have proof it was actually from climate. Meet the scientists investigating the origins of the COVID pandemic. Ten researchers with expertise in virology, public health, and animals will seek to answer the key question. An epidemiologist who helped to tie the 2012 outbreak of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, to camels, a food safety officer who studies how path pathogens spread in markets, and a veterinarian who found evidence linking the 2014 West Africa Ebola outbreak to bats roosting in a hollow tree. These researchers are among the team that the World Health Organization has assembled to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. The investigation aims to find out how and when SARS-CoV-2 first infected people. Strong evidence suggests that the coronavirus or originated in bats, uh, but its journey to people remains a mystery. Scientists say the team is highly qualified, but its tasks will be challenging. This is an excellent team with a lot of experience, says Martin Beer, a virologist at the Federal Research Institute for Animals Health in Griefswald, Germany. The group will, uh, will be working with researchers in China and professionals from the several from several other international agencies and will start the search in Wuhan, the Chinese city where the new coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 was identified, first identified, and expand across China and beyond. Now, this was released in December 2nd, December 2nd of 2020. Um, basically a whole year after it was discovered. They have not isolated the cause. It'll just it'll go on to tell you it thinks it's this and that, but they have no answers. Uh, to do yeah, MERS. During the COVID-19 panic pandemic, Koopman has tracked the rapid spread of SARS-CoV-2 in mink farms in Europe. Studies on the pandemic's origin will need to explore the role of animals kept for fur and food. Koopman says that the group is keeping an open eye or open mind about how the pandemic started and will not exclude any scenarios, including the unlikely one that SARS-CoV-2 accidentally escaped the laboratory. Scientists have previously told Nature that the virus is likely to have passed from bats to humans, probably through an intermediate animal, but definitely ruling out, but definitely rule, definitively ruling out the lab scenario will be difficult. Anything is on the table, says Koopman. Z Koopmans. Koopmans. So that's not off the table. And I'm sure uh, we get the point. So that says that they think it's zoonotic yet don't know. Uh, coronavirus, climate change, and environment. A conversa conversation on COVID-19 with Dr. Aaron Bernstein, director of Harvard Chan Sea Change. Below are some of the most common questions. Uh... Does climate change affect the transmission of coronavirus? Does air pollution increase the risk of getting coronavirus? Does it make symptoms worse? Will warmer weather slow the spread of the virus? How likely are we to see infections, infectious disease spread as a result of climate change? Why are emerging infectious diseases on the rise? What actions can it take to prevent future outbreaks? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's get to the, to the juicy one here. Where is it? Mm. Okay. 
how likely are we to see infectious disease spread as a result of climate change? Climate change has already made conditions more favorable to the spread of some infectious diseases, including Lyme disease, waterborne diseases, such as Vibrio para something or what, which causes vomiting and diarrhea, mosquito-borne vir diseases such as malaria and dengue uh, fever. Future risks are not easy to foretell, but climate change hits hard on several fronts that matter to when and where pathogens appear, including temperature and rainfall patterns to help limit the risks of infectious diseases. We should do all that all we can to vastly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. Interesting they mentioned Lyme disease because that's another one that's highly suspect is where it came from. Everyone, that's there's a strong likeliness that it came from a lab. Anyways, let's move on. The lab leak hypothesis. For decades, scientists have been hot wiring viruses in hopes of preventing a pandemic, not causing one. But what if? It's just they did this back and forth, yeah, because they they want you confused. But all of them say it's real. That's the one. You're not allowed to say. That's the one you'll get your channels flagged. You'll get a strike for medical misinformation. If you say it's not real. So we won't say that. No, no, no. Um, flask monsters. That's funny. So... I guess I'll read a little bit from this. What happened was fairly simple. I could, I have come to believe it was an accident. A virus spent some time in laboratory, and eventually it got out. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, began its existence inside a bat. Then it learned how to infect people in a claustrophobic mine shaft, and then it was made more infectious in one of more, one or more laboratories. Perhaps a part of the scientist's well-intentional but risky effort to create a broad spectrum vaccine. SARS-2 was not designed as a biological weapon, but it was, I think, designed mainly many thoughtful people dismiss this notion, and they be, may be right. They sincerely believe that coronavirus arose naturally, zoonotically, from animals without having been previously studied or hybridized or s sluiced through cell cultures or otherwise worked on by trained professionals. They... They hold that bat carrying coronavirus infected some other creature, perhaps a pangolin, and that pangolin may have already been sick with a different coronavirus disease and out of the conjunction and commingling, or coming, commingling of those two diseases with the pangolin, a new disease highly infectious to humans evolved, or they hyp hypothesized that two coronaviruses recombined in a bat, and this new virus spread to others other bats and then the bats infected a person directly in a rural setting perhaps and that this person caused a simmering undetected outbreak of respiratory 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 uh, resp <laughs> I can't say the word today respiratory resp alright you know the word you, you, you know it disease which over a period of months or years evolved to become vir virulent and highly transmissible but was not noticed until it appeared in Wuhan. There is no direct evidence for these zoonotic possibilities, just as there is no direct evidence for an experimental mishap, no written confession, no incriminating notebook, no official accidental report. Certainly, cra certainty craves detail, and detail requires an investigation. It has been a full year. 80 million people have been affected, and surprisingly, no public investigation has taken place. We still know very little about the origins of this disease. This, back and forth. How about here? China lab leak is the most credible source of the coronavirus outbreak, says top U.S. government official, and amid bombshell claims Wuhan scientist has turned whistleblower. This was January 2nd of 2021. One of America's most senior government officials says the most credible theory about the origin of coronavirus is that it escaped from a laboratory in China. See, that's a, that's a government conspiracy. 
that's their conspiracy I know a lot of people who I've spoken to who think that that's that's a I think that, that, that that's their theory but no that's been the mainstream theory since the get go and I've reported this in my uh my pandemic series that I wrote. What the hell are you trying to show us? No. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read this. It's just going to say the same stuff. Came from the lab. Came from the lab. It's just, I believe that this whole and whole theory and why it's pushed in the mainstream, even though they pushed the other theory. That it's zoonotic, you get the confusion there, but you also get a possible uh, precursor or a narrative to push war. Because they always say the China virus and all that stuff, and the big fight over it. That's what I think that is all about, really. Get people inflamed about China spreading the leaking the virus that affected America and all that big freaking war thing coming uh, I think that's the last thing I had to show yeah that's funny I guess I'll go through it a bit more uh Mr. Pottinger, Potting, Potting, Pottinger, Pottinger, said that the la latest intelligence points to the virus leaking from the top secret Luhan Institute in Virology, 11 miles from the market, saying there is a growing body of evidence that the lab is likely the most credible source of the virus. He claimed the pathogen may be, may have escaped through a leak or an accident, adding even establishment figures in Beijing have openly dismissed the wet market story. The comments which were made during a Zoom conference with MPs on China's last week come as a team of experts from the World Health Organization prepared to fly to Wuhan to investigate how the pandemic began and we already covered that story. Uh, critics fear the f probe will be a whitewash given China's influence on the WHO. Anyways, yeah. I, uh... think that's all a big setup. And there's no proof that it's due to climate change or that it isn't made up. Hmm? I've proven, I've shown proof of, or an evidence to the possibility that this is, was, uh, uh, yeah, I can't say it. I, I don't, I don't trust YouTube anymore, really, to, to say that, but let's say a scenario where the virus wasn't real and that they just timed it around the flu season because that's just when it came out it was in China's flu season and I showed this that's all a coincidence though YouTube just a coincidence the virus is definitely real, YouTube. It's absolutely 100% real. Except for that it's not. Um, I just want to show uh, the timeline I show. It's just over here. I'm going to wrap this up very quickly because it is late. I think there was other things I wanted to talk about, but I honestly don't remember, and I don't have any more links, so <laughs> I guess I'm done. So I just wanted to quickly 
wherever the heck it is. I think it's right here. Coronavirus pandemic part four. Corona, cold, flu, and the seasonal clue. And I called this like during while it was happening. I said that it would end in March. Because that's when the season, the flu season, ends in China. And guess what? Alright, gotta find it. <sighs> yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah. There's a Wikipedia. In the United States, the flu season is considered October through May. It usually peaks in February. In Australia, the flu season is considered May to October. It usually peaks in August. Flu seasons also exist in the tropics and subtropics, but are usually less sharply defined. In Hong Kong, which has a humid subtropical climate, Hong Kong is in China, the flu season runs from December to March. When did the coronavirus, the COVID-19 startup, or first got noticed December and as you can see March 1st China's Wuhan closes China's Wuhan closes coronavirus hospital as officials hail drop in new cases China's new coronavirus cases dropped below 100 Chinese authorities report 99 new cases, marking a drop of 143 a day before the death toll in China reached 33,070, of, of which the overwhelming majority is located in the Hubei, Hubei, Hubei province, dubbed the epicenter of the outbreak. And yeah, right in March, it dropped. And it dropped fast. Real fast. Because after I showed that, it like went down to zero in no time. It was like in zero in just a couple days. But anyways. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I've covered a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, I showed... What is this one? There's some... Uh, just like the run of the year flu. I showed an interesting thing that... What was it? All these uh, previous pandemics. In 2009, H1N1 flu pandemic was the first of for which a large supply of flu vaccine was available, through, although the vaccine became available as cases were already peaking. In the United States, a limited supply of flu vaccine was also available during the 1968 pandemic, but by the time it was available, cases had already peaked. So, there was never a case where vaccines could save the day. And look at all these pandemics. From 1889 to 90, it was a flu pandemic. Um, nah, 1.53 billion. Likely uh, H something, whatever. Spanish flu. That's the, that's the one that I like to talk about all the time. Oh, sorry, that was the world population. I read it wrong. Deaths here. 20 to 100 million, but it's all estimates. <laughs> 33%. All estimates. They don't have the real numbers. They don't know. Could have been less than 20 million. Asian flu. These are bird flus, by the way. All these. All these are avian flus. Uh... 
I know they say, uh, this too, 2009, they call it the swine flu, but it was Asian, or avian bird flu. It was bird flu in origin. Supposedly, he had a bird flu mixed with the human flu inside a pig, and then they called it the swine flu. And that one is supposedly related to this one, the Spanish flu. It's the same strain, but novel version of it. Anyways, this looks like this Russian flu looks like an H1 something. Oh! Oh, I need to find that article. I was just reading a crazy article earlier. Let me grab that real quick because it's actually funny that I saw the Russian flu there. The, the, the 1977 Russian flu. And one minute. I think I still have it. Wait, where did I read it? Oh yeah, I know where it is. Actually, I don't even have to look on my phone. I know where it is. Go to Twitter real quick. I, sh I believe I uh, shared it. I saw it on uh, Innovations HQ. I believe I saw it on his page. Go there real quick. And then I'll wrap this up. I just want... Because the whole Russian flu thing... I think it said the Russian flu. But it was just interesting. COVID-19 will likely be with us forever. Here's how we'll live with it. Eventually the virus could become a much milder illness. But for now, vaccinations and surveillance are critical to end the pandemic phase. What's after the pandemic phase? Well, we get to enjoy an endemic. COVID-19 continues to run its course. The likeliest long-term outcome is that the virus SARS-CoV-2 becomes endemic in large swaths of the world, constantly circulating among the humans, human population, but causing fewer cases of severe disease. Disease? disease eventually years or even decades in the future COVID-19 could transition into a mild childhood illness like the four endemic human coronaviruses that continue to the, con contribute to the common cold now I want to get to the get to the part I was thinking of Got it. In fact, it's even possible that one could co one cold causing coronavirus sparked a serious outbreak in the 1800s before. Oh, this okay. It's the first Russian flu. Never mind. 1800s before fading into the litany of mild, commonplace human pathogens based on the spread of its family tree. Researchers estimated in 2005 that the endemic coronavirus OC43 entered human, some, human sometime in the 19th century, likely the early 1890s. The timing has led some researchers to speculate the original version of OC43 may have called may have caused the Russian flu pandemic of 1890, which was noted for its unusually high rate of neurological symptoms, a noted effect of COVID-19. There's no hard proof, yeah, no shit, but there are a lot of indications that this wasn't an influenza pandemic, but a corona pandemic. Right, right. Because now we have to believe that the common cold causes pandemics. Even though there is no evidence of that except for their scamdemic, which is not evidence. Oh god, I hate this. I'm gonna have to shut this down. I'm getting annoyed. The crucible.